Hey, what's up, guys? So, I know I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, haven't forgotten about you guys. I want you to know that I like all the positive feedback, the likes, the comments, the subscribes. It's really motivating, inspirational to go ahead and just put out more content. So today I wanted to put out a video here. Uh, so you guys have seen my previous video here on the SR-15, the Knight's Arm SR-15 Mod 2, the 14 and a half inch gun. So I want to talk about its big brother here. So here today I got with me a SR-25 E2 Advanced Combat Carbine. This is their 16 inch lightweight 7.62 gun. So I'm going to go ahead and take the SR-15 off screen. Put this away real quick. And we're going to go ahead and break this down. This is not a shooting review, but this is more just a technical overview of what you can expect when you get one of these and some of the design features, why they, why they are the way they are. Can't talk. Um, so I am shooting the video in my backyard. I'm out here in Arkansas, uh, the natural state. All the range bays are taken up right now. The last few days have been pretty busy. So I'm just trying to find a noise-free environment. I do got a little bit of highway traffic behind me. So bear with me when there's a little bit of noise. I'll try to pause a little bit. But let's go ahead. We'll break this down from butt to tip and talk about what we got going on here. So from the factory, this guy came with an LMT SOP mod stock. Um, this SOP mod stock is a little different than most LMT SOP mods. The QD socket here is anti-rotational. I really like that a lot. When you got the rifle slung, it keeps the sling from getting all tangled up. A lot of these LMT SOP mod stocks either don't come with a QD socket or it's fully rotational. Moving forward, we've got a dry film lubricated receiver extension. This is a little longer than your standard carbine length receiver extension. And the reason why that is is because you've got a longer bolt carrier in here. You know, so you're feeding a longer cartridge, 7.62, and Knight's Armament, when they designed the gun, they wanted to keep using truck pass. There's that traffic I was talking about. But when they designed this gun, they wanted to use a 7.62 bolt carrier with a standard AR buffer dimension. So they went ahead and just increased the length of the receiver extension to accommodate the bolt carrier and the standard buffer. Here, their end plate, you've got two anti-rotational QD sockets on the left and the right side, and their castle nut. I really like their castle nut. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the old Colt Commandos, uh, the castle nut that they used on those guys. This isn't state, but I've never seen a Knight's gun have a castle nut come loose. It's actually really impressive. Uh, tons of rounds through these guys, been around a lot of these Knight's guns, and never seen one come loose. I'm pretty convinced they don't need it. So, moving forward, we've got a forged aluminum receiver set here, 7075T6, just like you would expect from Knights or quality manufacturer. A lot of guys are doing billet now, but Knights Armor decided to stick with their tried and true forged receiver set. We've got some ambidextrous features, magazine catch, ambidextrous, standard magazine catch, ambidextrous selector, just standard AR selector here. You got your normal bolt catch. On the other side, you've got a bolt release, not a bolt catch. So you can only release the bolt from that side. Moving down on the gun, we've got their uh, two stage trigger. It's around four and a half pounds. It's very smooth. I really like it. It's pretty reminiscent of uh, the Geisley SSA. So out of the box, it's a great value as opposed to a mil spec trigger. You've got a aluminum combat trigger guard of theirs. A2 pistol grip. I suspect that they left a normal A2 pistol grip on here just because uh, it's the first thing that goes. Pistol grips are super personal. So uh, I know a lot of guys, they like the BCM grip. Um, like I'm a big Myad guy. I really like the fat Myad. But like I said, everybody has their own pistol grip they like. So A2 is like $2. You slap it on there, leaves the factory, and it comes right off the gun. So. Inside the receiver extension, we've got an SR25 carbine action spring and a Knight's Arm and HH buffer. So I'm not going to take the one out of this gun out because I've taken this one out of my SR15. And I'm just going to kind of show you guys what makes this different from this one. I'm going to come from behind camera real quick so I can show you guys. So in my right hand here, we've got a BCM H2. 
and a Knight's Armament HH. So you can see the writing there, the part number. And they're different in color, but they're around the same weight. And the biggest difference between these two guys is assembly. The means of how they're assembled. You'll see here that there's a normal roll pin here. That holds on the Delrin bumper. In Knight's Armament and testing, they found out that that roll pin was prone to breaking a lot more often. So with the 7.62 cartridge, just because it beats up the buffer a little more, actually a lot more really so they included a rivet here they went the rivet route and that's why the price on these guys is higher because the durability of the buffer just went up to accommodate that 7.62 cartridge so that's what you're getting inside the receiver extension or when you buy one of those 14 and a half 11 and a half 556 uppers so i'm gonna put these guys aside real quick go ahead and take the upper down here show you the bolt carrier So the charging handle on this guy is nothing super special. It's just a normal T handle. It's got the Knights Armament style latch on here that's serrated. Uh, they don't ship the, the Gas Buster style with these guns anymore. Which I actually like. I like this a lot more. Um, these guns aren't gassy that much to begin with, even when they're suppressed. So this is slimmer, lower profile. It's just not as beefy and cumbersome. Come behind here real quick and show you guys the bolt carrier. So here on this Knight's Armament SR25, you got a fully chrome bolt carrier. Pretty beefy guy. Stakes are positive, really well staked. The carrier skids are sand cutter variety, pretty reminiscent of an FAL. Uh, fully chrome plated. Here you've got, you can notice a roll pin here. The firing pin, retaining pin is captive. Let me see if I can take this guy down. It's a little harder to do when you're behind camera. There we go. Firing pin comes right out. Let's see if I can get that cam pin out. Let me set this down real quick. So, this is the E2 bolt. Now, when we talk about like E2, we're talking about two enhancements. So their SR15 lineup has the E3 bolt, so the three enhancements, right? So just quickly talking about the SR15, the E3 bolt, the three enhancements that they have on those guys is the cam pin right here. This cam pin hole is made smaller. The cam pin is made smaller. And then the firing pin is made smaller to accommodate for those changes. The extractor is redesigned. It's got a lobster tail design two longer springs, a lower K values. The extractor pivot pin is moved forward for greater leverage. The, the bolt face is fully supported for the base of the cartridge. And the lugs are rounded and webbed to avoid uh, shearing and breakages. So on this guy here, the E2, they went ahead and went away from one large ejector to two smaller ejectors for more powerful and reliable ejection from the rifle. And then the second enhancement is this overall change in geometry to increase strength of the bolt. We'll go ahead and put this guy back together real quick. Alright. I'm not going to lie, these, these pieces are really nice when they're clean. They're just really pretty. It's kind of weird to say, but it's a little true. There we go. Just needs a little positive reinforcement there. Put this guy back in the upper. I'm not gonna lie, this is the hardest part right here for me, putting these guys back together. I just keep the 762 bolt carrier line up every time. So moving forward, you'll you'll run into one of my favorite features on these guns is the urx4 handguard what's really nice about this is that it's all one piece this handguard is the barrel nut there is no separate barrel nut so it's the same thing on the sr15 mod 2 I'll just bring that on screen real quick you guys are pretty familiar with this this is also the the barrel nut 
What I like about it is it's very rigid. It's a great mounting platform for IR lasers, uh, weapon lights and whatnot. And this is very robust. It's very simple. But with that comes new changes. Because the handguard is threaded directly onto the receiver, they've made some changes to the gas system. So underneath this guy is a proprietary gas system. It's extended, but it's also got different components. So I got a printout here to explain what's going on underneath the handguard because I can't show that all too well. And I apologize, I keep going behind camera and going back and forward, but I'm only one guy, so I'm just making do with what I got. So with this printout here, I think this picture is courtesy of Kevin Boland, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if I got it wrong, I apologize. But here you can see a 556 Mod 2 gas block arrangement. Um, just kind of a prototype because there's no gas port there. So here in the barrel shoulder, you can see that there's a notch cut that mates with the gas block. And when you put this gas block on the barrel, it allows it to be fully aligned, like it will not come out of alignment. So you take that shim and that castle nut, and you secure the gas block in place with a castle nut. And what that allows to do is you're, A, you're using the UREX4 handguard because you do have to place a gas block in through the front. And then this also allows you to avoid uh, having to use a pin and putting lateral pressure into the barrel through the bore. Here you'll also notice that the gas tube is of a straight design and it's got a bell there with a nut. So the nut secures the gas tube to the gas block and eliminates possibility of gas leakage. So it's a really ingenious design for us home guys. Uh, if you don't have the tools, it is proprietary, but this is a lot easier for armorers who do have the tools. And at the same time, you're getting a really robust IR mounting laser system. So these UREX4 handguards are about on par with monolithic, monolithic rails when it comes to uh, deflection, which is really nice. It's a really neat touch. It keeps it very simple, you know, and people have said, well, if it's the barrel nut, how does it not come loose? The thing is, these guys, if I'm not mistaken, they're torqued down to about 60 foot pounds. So um, you take it like a plastic vertical grip, you stick it on the bottom, you can try to turn. It's not going to come loose. You know, these guys are on there. Uh, you've got a lot of 762 guns with these on there, and they're not coming loose. So let's talk about the gas system a little bit, then we'll talk about the barrel. The gas system is extended. Now it's extended beyond the normal mid length. A lot of the uh, other 762 guns on the market, they've got mid length gas systems. Knights Armament went ahead and extended it further and they found out that uh, moving the gas port closer to the end of the muzzle allowed for them to have the gun run more reliably with the use of a suppressor. So when they design their weapons, it's in Knights Armament design philosophy to not have to change or modify the host weapon in order to introduce a sound suppressor. So moving the port out that way was their way of accomplishing that task, that objective. And as a byproduct, you're getting a smoother shooting rifle. You know, the extended gas system, uh, a purpose-driven gas port. When we talk about the barrel, that's kind of what the part of the magic and what keeps this gun so light, because this gun is about eight and a quarter pounds. You know, it's a very lightweight gun for the 7.62 gun. Uh, it's a chrome-lined, hammer-forged, 5R rifling cut barrel. The test target on this guy is just under three quarters MOA, shooting 168 grain federal gold medal match. And that just kind of tells you the accuracy potential of these guns. Um, so the accuracy potential of these guns is really astounding. Uh, that chrome lining in there, a lot of the times if it's evenly applied, it's not going to negatively impact accuracy. That 5R rifling, it also reduces carbon fouling, increasing the potential for accuracy. So for eight and a quarter pounds, you're getting a really lightweight, reliable, accurate, smooth shooting gun. Uh, I really like these guns. I have one of my own. Um, yeah, it's just, I can't help but feel like I'm shilling because I just really do like these guns that much. Uh, so when we talk about the muzzle device here, out of the box, we're getting their new QDC three-prong flash suppressor. And you'll notice here that it's got dimples here on the end of the muzzle and that's to mate with their QDC suppressors. So I don't have a 7.62 QDC suppressor here, but I've got my own personal 5.56. So let me go ahead and show you what's going on here in greater detail. 
so here we've got dimples here right in the muzzle device so we set that guy down real quick this is a QDC 556 suppressor and this locking collar here as you turn it there are ceramic ball bearings that protrude from the mounting system into the muzzle device so what this allows is it reduces carbon locking by a decent amount I've got a few surefires and they carbon lock more often than this guy and it maintains a very minimal point of impact shift it's very repeatable so at about 100 yards I'm getting less than a minute a minute straight down less than a minute so it's a very innovative design these guys are very expensive comparatively is what you'll hear is like hey thirteen hundred fourteen hundred dollars I totally understand um, but I think it's worth it myself personally I'm waiting for the new QDC CQB PRT suppressors uh, they're pressure reduction technology so less back pressure on the top of the gun we've got their Knight's Arm micro sights flip ups I really like these guys what I love about them is that they're completely toolless I don't need a tool so I can adjust the front side here there's a dial in the front that's completely thumb adjustable and for windage in the rear there's another thumb dial the drum here is adjustable for 200 600 meters what I really like about this front sight is that it's round it's very round and it's very thin so it's a lot easier to be precise with this as opposed to standard AR-15 front sights where it's square and it's really fat. On that note, I think I've pretty much covered everything. I'm sure after I'm done with this, I'll be like, hey, I forgot something. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I covered everything. I do want to note something here, though, is that uh, I'm not sponsored by Knight's Armament. Uh, I don't have any affiliation with them. These are all my personal guns. So this is my personal gun. I bought it with my money. Uh, my SR-15 here. Bought this with my money too. So I'm not paid by Knights. I'm not endorsed by Knights. Everything that I'm saying here is just all my personal opinion um, in regards to how I like them, their, their feel and whatnot. But a lot of everything else here is pretty factual when it comes to design aspects. So I hope you like this video. I hope that you get a little more information about what to expect when you grab one of these guns. Um, if you like this kind of content, go ahead, like, subscribe. Uh, it keeps me motivated to make more of this stuff. So, hope to see you guys in the next video. And then you guys can reach out to me. I'm on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description below of my handle. So, look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.